Okay, so um, uh, asked a question on somebody who's helping kids, but one of the kids is reacting adversely. So, um, uh, and it's ruining the experience with all the kids that are that are responding in a positive way to the support that's being offered. Um, so, I think this is just uh, this is just the way of testing of the universe or temptation of the resolving of uh, um, of identifications that still reside. And uh, for me, that I mean, there's two ways. There's two things I would do uh, from a self inquiry point of view. One is um, so let's say um, all these kids are responding well to the support being offered, but um, one of the kids is um, responding in an adverse way or a bad way, shall we say? Um, so the, the one the one thing I'd say is like um, the the you know what am I that's being affected by this kid? Um, so okay, so this kid has has you know given a negative response, but who am I that's responding to the negative response? What what is it in me that has been hooked in by this? So I then um, look look at me. Who's the me that has been affected by this kid? And where is that me? Is there a little like a is am I a thought? Am I is there a little person inside that's reacting adversely? So um, and if there is a me, if it's a little me inside of me that's uh, triggered, or if it's just some thoughts, then what's observing those thoughts? And is the observer, is that a person? And and if the observer is a person or isn't a person, uh, uh, is it being affected by the, the kid's reaction? Or is there any memory of the kid's reaction? Now, if, if, the, if the memory of the kids keeps coming back or thoughts about the kid keep coming back, then who am I that's being affected by that? So through this self-inquiry, um, you can start to release it. So that's what I call transcending. You know, I'm, tra I'm cleaning up or I'm transcending the meaning or the identification of an adverse response or a seeming adverse response uh, that seems to be occurring in the world. And there's uh, there seems to be something in me that's identifying with uh, what seems to be an adverse response. So um, now this is... Um, uh, um, okay, let me just quickly answer this. Um, sorry, one second. Someone. Um, Okay, sorry about that. Um, so it's like, what is it in me that, um, so it's just like going to that. So when I do that, it's like, okay, there's a me that's being disturbed by the kid. Okay, so then the, the, the biggest temptation is not to inquire. That, that's the problem. So then I stay in the, I stay unconscious to the me that's being triggered. So I don't, I don't inquire into what is this me that's being uh, uh hooked into uh this kid and gave an adverse response so that that for me is the biggest pro pro problem staying unconscious and allowing a me to exist without looking into what is that me and then that me is like going oh this kid didn't respond well and it's all about me but i didn't see what is the me so then the opportunity then the, the miracle for me is to look at what is what am i that's being affected who am I that can be affected by a, a seeming individual having an adverse response? So then I go, okay, where is it? Is it a thought? What is it? What what am I? And then okay, and then I said it might be an image. There might be an image there, like a, an image of a kid, or it might be a sound, or it might be some a, a collection of thoughts, or there might be a sense of me. There's an intuition of an individuated me that's feeling pain or, or has something in the solar plexus. So whatever it is, identify that. And then what's observing that? And then if I go to the observer of that and being in the observer of the me that was affected,
but is the observer affected by these by 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 uh, is the observer registering in me and is the observer registering some uh, uncomfortable thoughts or images uh, and then again just as saint francis says what you're looking for is where you're looking from if the observer is still identifying with the personal me or with thoughts of a of a, of a boy responding badly um then uh, look at, look at if there is an observer of that observer and then in that way i'm transcending i'm transcending the need to hook into any ideas of me or the boy now i just like to say i mean what's the point of all of this well the point of all of this for me is the is the idea that when my identified self comes into existence uh the it's actually the vibration or the it's, it's more darkness you see it's not useful for me to be in the darkness of an identified or separated or individuated me it's not good for the kid you see because um uh my dark you know if, if the kid's in darkness and i'm in darkness uh then uh, there's not much light in the room but if the kid goes into darkness and then i transcend the individuated me the separated me into the infinite then that light which is beyond a me and a kid um can orchestrate things uh from that place so that's where the greatest healing arises when there's no me so uh, so the problem then is that the me sometimes you can be in bliss and oneness and sometimes something gets hooked into uh suddenly appears a me an individual me that gets hooked into something and then it's an opportunity to dissolve that because um for anyone who's committed to being in the infinite all the time everything that is dualistic or of separation will come up at some point to to um to transfigure that's just the way it is you're not going to be free all the time because whatever is left for identification will come will come in divine order to test you to see whether you can let it go and re return to the, the infinite so that that's just the way it is uh, you know no one there, there will be testing in my experience maybe that sounds too dualistic but it's like um if you commit to unconditional love uh, seemingly unlovable people will appear and if you commit to being in the infinite non-stop and not um and no longer uh, ha having the intention to identify in separation then uh, things that seem to be meaningful within the, the idea of an individuated self body or thoughts or images and the internal landscape or seeming as if it's dualistic external images thoughts and and things residing will, will come to be transcended so for me it's just a case of keep observing when these things arise uh, in the situation or after the situation until there's nothing there uh, as soon as you observe as soon as i observe it just disappears because uh, once there's no me then no me cannot remember anything and no me cannot be troubled by um by an, by well a, a me that is nothing cannot be troubled by a thing essentially so if i'm nothing i have to be a thing to be troubled by another thing uh so if i'm a thing if i'm a thought or a body or a feeling then i can be troubled by another thing but if I look and I find I'm a no thing, then no thing cannot be troubled by a thing. Uh, so that's uh, uh, that. That's the great joy of being a no thing, because no thing, no thing is is invulnerable, as the course would say. It's only when I'm a thing that I become vulnerable. Uh, uh, so the thing with spiritual seekers is unconsciously, in my experience, I unconsciously become a thing and forget I'm a no thing. Uh, the, and then the the problem resides and there's not a then just to inquire and become a no thing and then the no thing will handle everything uh, and actually nothing can touch no thing 